Good evening. Welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring women-owned businesses from across the country. And now, for your host, Kimberly McLemore. All right, good evening, and welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring entrepreneurs and women-owned businesses from across the country. I am your host, Kimberly McLemore, and welcome to a special edition of tonight's show. With us, we have Damon Naylor, multifaceted, passionate, and skilled, all described Damon, the real Naylor, with several hundred speaking engagements under his belt. Damon has become known as a Renaissance man, inspirational communicator, gift guru, and authority expert who is able to provide direction, inspiration, and education to any audience. Mr. Naylor possesses a wealth of knowledge in the following areas of educational, entrepreneurial, business, religious, entertainment, relationships, leadership, and parenting. As a result of his expertise and insight, he has been featured hundreds of times in various media outlets, including the Huffington Post, Reader's Digest, Thrive Global, Gold Cast, MSN, Yahoo Podcasts, radio or TV shows, magazines, and newspapers. And of course, currently Damon serves as an author, a speaker, consultant, coach, and an educator. So without further ado, please help me welcome to my platform, Mr. Damon, the real Naylor. Hello, Damon. How are you? I am fine. And hello, Kimberly. And to your audience, we're just glad to be here with you guys. And we appreciate the opportunity. Well, it is my pleasure, and I'm glad that we actually can get on here and talk to <laughs> the listeners. Because for those who are wondering why we were taking so long, we, you know, we had this technical difficulty thing going on difficulty, in the background. Yeah, yeah, this is weird, <laughs> but we are finally here. Yeah. And and before yeah. we actually jump into everybody into the actual interview, I want to tell the listeners, and I want to tell you how tonight is actually a very special night that we are today. We're going to be celebrating the 200th episode here on your resource for success podcast program here on Ah. radio and we're on 13 other different platforms. I'm so glad that I have Damon, the real nailer to, to hang out with me tonight and celebrate. (laughs) Yay. Yay. Well, congratulations to you. That is a magnificent feat. Hats off to you for sticking in the game and doing it that long for that many episodes. That's commendable. Great job, Kim. Keep well, up the good thank work. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So enough about me. Let's dive into <laughs> who you are, Damon. So please tell the listeners a little bit more about who the real Damon Naylor is. Well, Damon originated in New Orleans, Louisiana, and then at the tender age of 18, I migrated to where I am now, which is in the northern part of the state in a place called Monroe, Louisiana. So I came up here for college. I attended what's now ULM, and it was the Northeast Louisiana University, and now it's the University of Louisiana at Monroe. And I obtained my Bachelor of Arts degree in education. And when I finished, I taught for seven years. I taught third and fifth grade at the elementary level. Really loved teaching, but kind of got to a place to where I was losing a passion for just the classroom setting. That format just began to make me feel limited and confined. And so in 2004, I ended up launching out to start a business there or pursue entrepreneurship and I pursued motivational speaking, writing and music production. And I was doing that for a while. Things were going really well and then ended up hitting kind of a dry spell. And then I pivoted and started a janitorial service with a friend of mine, a buddy. And we ended up running that business for like 12 years. And then I transitioned into what I'm doing now as far as the parent, being a parent educator, work with a local nonprofit organization while still doing my speaking, writing, and music as well. And, of course, I've added the head of consultant and coach to that as well. And just doing all of those things, keeping myself busy. And on the personal side, I'm a husband and a father of four wonderful sons. So, Mm yes. Wow. Well, I can definitely say you are busy and the jack of all trades. <laughs> we are <laughs> definitely going to dive into this a little further because, you know, listening to you talk about you were an educator and how you just kind of lost that passion of just being educated, you know, doing the education piece because you're stuck in this box. 
And then to hear yeah. that you've blossomed out of that box into all these different things. Um, before we jump into the portion about your um, doing the consulting and so forth, how did you get go from being a consultant and doing the business of um, cleaning and so forth with your your friend? I mean, because that's a huge, huge difference. And then get back know, into, right? yeah, I mean, it's like, <laughs> I mean, janitorial work, I mean, nothing wrong with it, you know, but do, yeah, and, yeah. You know, business is a business, but it just, it's such a complete difference to what you started out doing. And then of course came back to doing again. So how did you yeah. kind of make that decision during that time frame? And I'm glad you asked that question because most people wonder the same thing. As a matter of fact, while I was serving as a janitor at different locations where people were on site and I would literally tell them all of the other things I do and they would just look at me with this confused look and most of the time they would think I was lying until I sent them <laughs> the information and they saw it and like, wow, this dude really does all this stuff. Why are you here? Right. But it was basically that pivot in a kind of a, 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 a a time of necessity, I guess, because like I said, things had began to kind of dry up with because I had put out my um, latest CD, I had put out my latest book, and things were really hot and going well for a while. Then all of a sudden, it kind of died down. I didn't follow up with a release soon enough, which I learned from that. You know, you have to constantly come up and put out new material. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening, as I stated, ended up having a partner. And uh, we just we, we, there was an opportunity that presented itself as far as a, some company of a local bank that needed a uh, janitorial service. And because we had that inside connection mm -hmm. and I knew I could run a business, I knew I could clean really well. I'm pretty organized. I was like, well, let's try it. And the next thing you know, we tried it. And when I say, you know, God bless, just things began to open up. All kinds of doors opened up and we just did so much. We had so much success, experienced so much success with it, and it was just an awesome endeavor. But what happened, like I always tell people, if you remove that part of my journey, then you remove some pertinent information and revelation and experiences that I gathered through that time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's all relevant to who I am today, because while I was running that business, that's when I you know, got my experience at, experience at hiring employees. Mm -hmm. And we had about, I think, 13 or 14 at the height of the company when we were doing our best. And to be able to organize that and to be able to, you know, do the payroll, uh, um, broker the contracts and, and do management and all of that stuff, it taught me so much about business, the ins and outs of it, and managing people. And as I stated, that is all of those concepts and those skills I transferred into what I'm doing now, and it's so relevant. And I know most people, like you said, seem so dis detached and disconnected mm -hmm. from who I am and what I am, but it's, it was all a part of it. And then I would, initially I would say I thought it was a detour, but it, it actually was all along the path. It was just one of those places we had to stop to, to gain and glean those important lessons and, mm -hmm. and, and um, concepts that are now relevant to us today. But as I always tell people as well, I kept my eye on the actual prize, which was to be, you know, to do the motivational speaking, the writing, and music, music production, right. basically, you know, full time. So mm -hmm. with me doing what I'm doing now, I'm just right smack dab in the, in the perfect will there and just fulfilling my destiny. Right. Well, yeah. you know, I think it's amazing how we think we have the answer and we think we know where we're supposed to be at the right time. And obviously timing was everything for you and the path yeah. that you were on was fine. But yeah. then you had, like you said, those other lessons to learn about business. And as we yeah. know, business, you know, it's one thing to know your passion, but it's another thing to know mm -hmm. everything else that goes around that passion when it comes to running a business. And 90% of the time yeah. people are lost in that perspective and it takes something, it takes a little something to kind of make you say, you know what, how am I going to do this and this and this? Yeah. And so, like you said, having the opportunity to learn that portion of the business has got you where you're at today. So let's backtrack a little bit more yeah. um, that, you know, before you even started into the janitorial business, you talked about doing the um, inspirational speaking, you know, you were tired of, like I said, doing the educational thing because it kind of boxed you. So talk a little yes. bit about that experience and how did it inspire you to walk away from what we would consider a great opportunity as an educator and then, you know, turn around and do what you did? Well, what happened, I had, while I was teaching, it just, 
out of the blue, people began to request me to come and conduct speaking engagements. I mean, just out of nowhere. And they were coming from all kinds of places. I was, I was doing a, uh, elementary school assemblies, graduations, you name it, uh, church functions, workshops. And I'm like, man, this is, this is funny. And I, I began to look into it and just, I really loved it. Like you said, that was, I was passionate about it and I was skilled at doing it. And I was like, man, that, that might be awesome. And I began to do the research and found out about motivational speaking and everything. Mm-hmm. And because uh, those, those were opening and I was making lots of connections, I was like, well, that would definitely be uh, something that I can really step out and do and do effectively. And then, as I stated, um, well, you know, I already actually been doing the music prior to that. Mm-hmm. And my thing was, if I step out, it'll be, I guess, a little uh, more, it would be safer with with me having more than one iron in the fire. And that's something I always try to coach people and teach them. I always have multiple streams right. and multiple options. You always want to have options. Mm-hmm. And that way, you know, if, some, if one thing gets stopped up, then you can always pivot and turn to the next or just have several options. But, yes, that's what began to happen. We began to get those requests, and I began to have a lot, lots of um, experience and open doors and opportunities to speak. And that's why we decided, okay, well, we can launch out and do that because things were really opening up and flowing mm-hmm. for us there. Well, the one thing that you have that most people don't have is that you have the gift of music. Okay, <laughs> so if, yes. if if you couldn't, if you were having an issue, you know, trying to do your speaking engagement, you can just start breaking out singing, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. So, like you know, it's like a juggling balancing act, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can pull out so many things out of the trick bag, but yes, yeah, exactly. Right, but you know, you call they call yourself the Renaissance man. You know, you you have your inspirational communicator. So, what is it that you know inspires you to inspire others? How do you do that? Well, I believe that motivation is intrinsic at it, in its purest form, and it's within all of us. And I just thank God for being motivated and self-motivated, having that intrinsic motivation and knowing how it operates. And within us all, we have it, but sometimes it's hard to access. And as a, an inspirational speaker, an inspirational communicator, it's my job to serve as a like a spark to ignite and, and serve as a catalyst to kind of connect with individuals and just get that spark started within them. And once I get that, it'll eventually grow into a blazing fire and just consume them and they'll be Mm self-motivated. Because other than that, you have to receive that the external motivation or extrinsic motivation, which is from others. It could be in the form of money or just a coach or something like that. And all of that's good. You know, we, we need those types of motivations. But at the end of the day, there are some things that are going to require us to just have that inner motivation. And I believe that I have it consistently. I'm upbeat. I'm happy. I'm living life zestfully. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to impart that to others. One thing I always share as well is the concept of reproduction and production. And I always say you can only reproduce what's already produced in you. And I always say, you know, you've heard that the term hurt people hurt people. Right. Well, I say bless Bless people, bless people, and also inspired people, inspire people, Mm -hmm. educated people, educate people. And I'm able to reproduce that because it's already produced in me. I'm already motivated. I'm already stirred up. I'm already excited. And I can give and impart that energy to others and uplift them and give them that same, you know, strength and power as well and vigor to live life with that zest and enthusiasm. Right. So as you're constantly inspiring others, tell me who inspires you. How does people keep you uplifted? Well, I think really just my my relationship with God, I would say, is where I get my strength and my motivation from the most. But also my family, my friends, my, my children, of course. I, I'm just inspired by them to be the best dad that I can be. My wife to be the best husband I can be. Those who I serve, you know, those... Putting out for me is the blessing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, when I when I put out, there's something about finding what I call your dominant gift and being able to impart 
to others. And so that really in and of itself, that is my reward. And that inspires me to do more and more. But yes, I get my, my um, motivation from those different entities, those different groups, you know, like I said, mm-hmm. my family, those I serve, uh, my coworkers, friends, they all contribute to my, to my energy. Just looking at everybody, looking at the good in everybody and knowing that you have people who love you and care about you, that, that just inspires me all in itself. Right. And you said that um, you're currently uh, working with more with the children, correct? So is that what you love to do when it comes to um, inspiring and, and, you know, giving your gifts out to children? Yeah. Well, actually, I'm a parent educator, so I I mostly work with the parents. But we we do work with the kids, too. Mm -hmm. Um, At this time, with, with COVID being in effect, we haven't had our kids coming to the building, but okay. we're more, I'm more so of a parent educator and just dealing with those who have uh, had their, their kids taken away by the state, either due to abuse or neglect, they get mandated. They have to come to get referred to us, to my agency for mandated parenting. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so, but I, but of course I still love the kids. I still do youth functions and everything. I still go into the schools or wherever to speak and do workshops and speaking engagements. But yes, I will always love the kids and, uh, you know, yes, that's, that's my heartbeat as well. I'm okay. always concerned about that next generation. Absolutely. And so obviously, you know, last year was crazy for everybody. So everybody had to learn how to pivot. Talk about your experience in 2020 and how you pivoted your business and then how currently today it's, um, if it, are you in a a hybrid type scenario with your business or are you going to continue to stay doing the virtual aspect of the business? Well, it'll be both, like to say, hybrid and then, you know, in-person, or virtual, however doors open and however we're able to do it. But I tell you what was a major shift as far as my business last year, I was able to get a contract and I'm a consultant with a, um, a, a, a company called Intuitive Synergies. And so with that, I'm doing, I've been doing a consultatory. It's been over a year now, a year and, and probably a month. Um, no, actually this month, made, I just made a year. Mm-hmm. Being on, on an, uh, an independent consultant with that company, and we're working with the Department of Mental Health and Addictions in Indiana, trying to set up a, a regional system to help with mental health and substance misuse. So it was really a blessing to be able to connect with that agency, and we we've been we've been doing that for a year now, setting up that regional system, and that just really added and took my business to a, to another level to be able to do that and to be on a um employed you know as a consultant mm-hmm. for a whole year but uh yes that that really helped out and then currently this year what I've done I've started doing workshops then doing different concepts I had one in January I teamed up with some partners actually out of the UK two sisters and their company's called Rhyme Entertainment and we did a workshop called Media Mastery and I had one scheduled for the end of January as well, but one of the facilitators ended up getting COVID. And so we, okay. we had to postpone that, hadn't rescheduled that one. But I have another one coming up in June mm-hmm. called, called Communicating and Connecting, the Communicating and Connecting Conference. But, uh, yes, that's what I've done as far as the pivot started setting up my own workshops online because normally I would do them in person at the library, right. the local civic center and stuff. But, yes. Yeah. Right. But, you know, and the, and the blessing about pivoting and having to do everything virtually, you're able to reach out further than what we could have yeah. done, you know, when you're just in one area because you can't get to everybody uh, being that you're doing it physically. So I think a lot of people have learned yeah. that pivoting has been, a, like I said, a blessing. Um, and now yeah. they can they can truly make their businesses work in a way that they had never thought about. And it's funny that, you know, when all this happened uh, four years ago, uh, actually five years now for me, I had talked about doing everything uh-huh. virtually and people laughed at me when it came to doing a business, <laughs> like, Oh no, you know, uh-huh. nobody wants to do it that way. And then here it is over four uh-huh. years later. <laughs> Guess what? Uh, so you were ahead of the curve. Yeah. I was trying to be ahead of the curve and, you know, I was getting beat down all at the same time, but it just goes to prove to you that, you know, you never put all your eggs in one basket, right? Cause we never know what's going to happen to us and as you said earlier you know you want to have these different streams available in order to be a successful business so let's talk a little bit about um a little bit more on the entertainment side and then we're going to talk about you being an author so as an entertainer what music did you actually um produce and you said that you are still currently uh singing i believe 
Yeah, well, I do positive and um, Christian hip hop. That's what I do, and I produce the music as well. I write and I perform it. But yes, that's what I do. That's my genre that I work with. But I also produce R and B music as well. And so, I, like I said, uh, the advantage I have is with with me wearing so many hats of being able to pr- produce the song, write the song, and I could either produce it and write it for someone else or do it for myself. But uh, yes, that's what I, that's the genre I do. And last November, I put out my sixth project entitled Life, L-I-F-E, and it's available on all of your major download and streaming sites. But uh, yeah. Wow, wow, you are definitely full. <laughs> got a lot of little tricks in that bag. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so now tell me about your books. Uh, so how many books have you written? I just published my fourth book last year, Mm -hmm. and it's entitled Living, Loving, Leading. And so, of course, it's about, you know, life, you finding your who, as I always say, and fulfilling your what, or finding your noun and fulfilling your verb, or Mm -hmm. finding your your purpose, you know, your identity and fulfilling your purpose. That's kind of the beginning of the book, and just understanding how the mind, spirit, soul, and body work, how they're separate but connected. Then the middle portion we deal with love, you know, loving God, loving yourself, loving others. If you have a spouse, loving your spouse, loving your children. Mm-hmm. And of course, the last part of the book deals with just leadership, the different leadership principles, leadership styles, your types of supporters, building your dream team, and uh, what I call the the um, ten laws for leading. But we address just a lot of leadership principles at the end of the book. But uh, yes, that's that's the latest book we have. Okay, so do you ever get tired? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I thought Amazing, I was crazy and busy. I, I, know, I know. I And I tell you, look, it's one thing we missed. You, you said talked about the music in the book, but <laughs> earlier this month on the 1st, I actually um, released my, I have an online school, and so I released my latest course entitled Branding, Building, and Balling. And that's really, I, I extracted some of the concepts from my book, Living, Loving, Leading, but of course added lots more and tailored it to be more relevant to like entrepreneurs, business owners, as well as leaders. But Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with a lot of concepts that are relevant to them as far as PR, publicity, and um, obtaining features and and publications and uh, interviews like this and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, we we just released that as well, published that. But yeah. And you've had an opportunity to be on a lot of various media outlets. So talk about the experiences of being able to be on, you know, have an opportunity to be on like Huffington Post and Yahoo and so forth. How do you, as an um, entrepreneur, reach out to those individuals in order to have these opportunities that you had? Or did they reach out to you? Talk a little bit about those experiences. Well, what happened, the, my greatest resource that, man, that has helped me so much is Hayro. I help a reporter out. And I use that as as well as a couple of other ones there. But that's like been one of the top ones to obtain those features. And I know a few of them, it was like directly people who worked on the staff at those different companies or, mm-hmm. or different publications. But then uh, I would say like the, the one for MSN, or no, it's a, several of them that, that turned up on MSN. I didn't even know, but I guess it was through one of the other sites that I had written for okay. because it gained so much traction, it ended up on MSN. And uh, I was all, you know, I'm also on Yahoo and then Yahoo Finance, and it was kind of the same way there mm-hmm. because I know directly with the, the Yahoo Finance, it was through a, a um, site called Go Banking. And I had submitted an article that they had accepted and published, and then it ended up on Yahoo as well. And then um, I do a lot of writing. I got a connection with Thrive Global mm-hmm. and um, doing doing stuff with them in the Authority Magazine. And so once you kind of get your, your material there, it normally gets picked up on major stuff. Like I was on Newsbreak as well. That's like a major site that prints the news. Wow. And what happened, it took one of the articles from the Thrive Global release or pub- published publication that I had done. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yes, it's been a, a tremendous experience just to see your, your your work being accepted by these major outlets. It's, like, mind-blowing. And i tell you the funniest quick story. One of my coworkers, she was online surfing, and she mm-hmm. was reading some information in an article 
And then all of a sudden she got to the end and she was like the Arthur Damon. Now she's like, oh my God, this is Damon's <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she told me that. I just felt so humbled and so proud at the same time. But she was like, your stuff is on MSN. And she was like, I'm just reading like, oh, this is good stuff. And then I get to the end, it's you. But uh, yes, it's, it's been, I mean, like I said, it's a blessing. I'm just overjoyed and thankful for the opportunity. But uh, yes, I count it a blessing. Yeah, yeah, well, you definitely have the spirit inside of you. So you have many listeners are listening in tonight and they're hearing all of this amazing information you're passing out. So I'm sure there's somebody saying to themselves, you know, I want to be who he is or I want to have what he has, but I want to build it my way. What type of um, advice would you give this individual who may want to start a business and may need those that little bit of golden nuggets that you can pass on to them tonight? I always just try to give people four major questions. And it comes from my, my G3 journey program where I help people discover what I call a dominant gift. And I always try to encourage people to try. If you're going to start something, start something that, first of all, you're skilled at doing. So that's the first question. What, do, what, I, what am I good at doing? Then the second question is, what am I passionate about doing? Or what do I love doing? And I always put skill before passion because you can do something that you're passionate about but lack the skill. And I always give an example of American Idol. You know, a lot of mm-hmm. those people, they're passionate but not skilled. Mm-hmm. And so then the third question is, what do you do that has a positive impact or effect on others? And this would go under the category of, of effectiveness. So you want to do something that it people enjoy and, you know, they're telling you, look, you, you have a future in that. You, you do really, when you do that, you do it really well. We love your products or services or whatever it is you're doing. And then the fourth thing is, what can you do? without monetary compensation and still feel fulfilled and satisfied. In mm. essence, what can you do if you didn't get paid a dime, you would still feel rewarded and satisfied and fulfilled doing it. And if you can find either a gift you have or an area that you work in that can be placed in each category, you find what I call your dominant gift. And so the thing is, if you can start a business or a service that utilizes that in some kind of way, then more than likely you're going to experience the success and, you know, the fulfillment. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you're going to make the money. And that's why I call my program the G3 Journeys for Gift, Glamour, and Gold. So it's all about finding a gift so you can obtain the glamour and receive the gold. Mm-hmm. But, yes, that's what it's all about, just making sure you have something that aligns with your gifts and talents and also just having that vision of what you want to become and where you want to go. And then mapping it out, planning it, you know. And I exactly. have a, a message called the, the vision, the uh, vehicle, and the voyage. So you got to know, see where you're going, get your vehicle, and then go out on and make that trip. Take the voyage to get to your destination. But, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, basically at the end of the day, what you're telling listeners as well is that you have to know your, have your passion and your purpose and worry about, like you said, the income will come later, you know, because if you start yeah. out, if you start the other way, then it's always going to be chasing money versus really yeah. understanding why you're doing what you're doing. And I think a lot of times, you know, we, we live in a society that's all about instant gratification. Yeah, and so people aren't as willing to work as hard or to let things grow organically because we are living in a world that tells you you have to have everything right now. So, you know, exactly what you're talking about is the way that every business should go where, you know, like you said, you need to know exactly what it is you're passionate about, you know, learn that journey, you know, understand why or how you can help somebody else in order to be able to move forward to get the income side of it. So I love, you know, your concept and what you're teaching people because it's exactly what needs to be done for businesses today. And and from the way I look at it is that they'll last longer versus, you know, you being this overnight success and then you're falling yeah. off the curb because we, we don't know what happened yeah. to you because, <laughs> you know, you got your millions, yeah. but then you're gone, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about sustainability. And as you're stating, you know, our gifts and talents we have is really for the worst for everybody else. And as you give it out and be that blessed, Blessing. Don't worry, you your blessings will come in, in return. But yes, it's like you said, it's all about sustainability and longevity, and that's something that we really help people to establish. So you can last long. Yes. 
Exactly. Well, as we are getting close to the end of the show, before we um, end the end of the show, please let everybody know um, how they can, again, get a hold of you and where they can find your books. And if you have any current events, again, uh, when those will be coming out so that they can go ahead and uh, apply for those or, you know, if they want to be a part of uh, listening to your programs or actually be a part of helping getting some help in the consulting side as well. Okay. Well, my most comprehensive site is the real D A R I L dot O R G, and that's the simplest one to find. If you go there, it will have my bio information, services, links to all the other sites. But I also have another site that's named after my book. It's Living Loving Leading dot net. And you can go there, and as I say, we got a lot of information, programs, and different products there. But as far as my books, they're on Amazon.com, so you can look up Living, Loving, Leading, or just type in my name. I also have a book I wrote a few years ago, a spiritual book called Revelation Rightly Revealed, but it's all all of the, those are on Amazon. And then, like I said, my, music's on, my music is on all of your download sites, but it's under the name of The Real, D-A-R-I-L. And as far as Facebook and Instagram, it's just Damon, D-A-M-O-N, N-A-I-L-E-R, just Damon Naylor. And uh, let me see, Twitter is D-A-R-I-L and the number one. But uh, yes, and as far as my online school, it's reallifeacademy.thinkific.com. But if you really just put in my name, Google it, all of these sites are going to come up. Right. I have a, a high <laughs> SEO as far as my content because we have so much out there. And I guess the last thing I'm having at connect, Communicating and Connecting Conference, that's June 12th. And, uh, you know, I could say you can go to Eventbrite to register for that. But, yeah. Okay. Well, wow. Like I said, you are a busy man. And, you know, I hope that you take care of yourself and get some relaxation in between all these things that you are doing because yes, <laughs> you are absolutely, Definitely. absolutely the Renaissance man. So the name is, is fitting for you. And, you know, I do appreciate you coming on the show with me this evening. And of course, you know, like I said, celebrating our 200th episode together, that is crazy. So you've provided yes. such amazing information to all the listeners. So I hope you all have enjoyed um, this evening's show. And do you have any last words for our listeners this evening, uh, Darrell? I just want to say, go for it. Don't hold back. Live it like it's your last day. Just take your shot. You know, shoot that shot. Don't worry about it. If you miss or whatever, more than likely you're going to hit that three point. You're going to score. So just go ahead on and take the shot. Stop making excuses. Stop worrying about or considering anything that's hindering you. Just get over it, get beyond it, and make it happen. All right. Well, you heard it from the best here, the authority expert himself, Mr. Damon DeReal Naylor. Again, it has been a pleasure having you on the show this evening. And for everybody else, what do you wish existed for you in 2021? It is time for you to start spreading those wings and moving yourself out. If you would like to talk to me and you want to just conversate about your next steps, you can reach me at Kimberly WSBILC at gmail.com. And let's just chat. If you want to learn more about WSBILC.com, just go to the website. I just said it. It's www.wsbilc.com about our services and programs. Or if you may want to be a guest on the show, please reach out to me at any time and get your name on the list because, you know, we are constantly growing and we're constantly doing a lot. And of course, we also have an amazing campaign going on, reach, trying to reach our $5,000 so that we can continue to provide more resources for success, which means that we would like to, um, we're getting requests to have an additional show, another program here. So another night of the same show, of course, and then have more Q&A live sessions with our favorite um, experts that we've been talking to on the radio, may better to have them live. I think everybody would enjoy that. But, you know, and we also want to provide a few other things that I'm not going to talk about tonight. But again, you know, please, you know, reach out and support um, our programs and support WSBILC.com. Everything we do here is to inspire and to uplift and to provide resources so that we're not reinventing the wheel. You can learn everything here. All these guests that come on provide you amazing information. If you're a true listener, you're taking notes, you are gaining a lot of great knowledge for free. So make sure that you continue, like I said, to support us. We are here every week at 7 p.m. Eastern on Thursday evenings right here on iHeartRadio. We will be back again next week with a more amazing guest. You can also download 
our show on the mobile app through Google Play or wherever you listen to your podcast. Until then, you enjoy all the rest of your evening and good night. Good night, everyone. We will be back next Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Follow us on Spreaker, www.spreaker.com slash user slash WSBI. View our new WSBI website anytime at www.wsbillc.com and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. 